hey, what's the story? Like, give, give me the real story here. Like, 93 Stanley Cup final playing against Wayne. Oh. And the Marty McSorley yep. illegal stick, which, I mean, obviously impacted yep. the this, this, this series. But, like, there's a story that yep. goes behind the scenes there. Like, whose decision was it? And did you guys know something was up prior to even having the referee or the linesman, whoever it was, that checked it? Well, the, the, the decisions were shot. I, I'm the one that went to him and told him about the stick. And like I tell you, I know this story that says like our trainer went into their room. There was locks in, on every room. And like, it, it's the same thing. But like, if you remember the belt, uh, at, the, at the forum, both teams were, you know, were on the same side and both racks of sticks were right there. I mean, if they wanted to watch our sticks, I mean, the, all they have to do is turn their heads. But like in, in those years, uh, and I keep them seriously, like they had six or seven guys. It, the, the curve on the stick today is half an inch. Yeah. In, our, in our days, which was like maybe I think they changed the rules 10 years ago, something like that. It was a quarter inch. Right. So if, he, if, so if he had a big, like if he had a big curve, it was easy to spot. No, and I, I was and I, exactly, and so and, and I was I'm a, I was really visual, I, and you know, you get in the playoffs, you always look. We had six or seven guys on our team that had illegal sticks, but everybody had one or two legal sticks in the rack. And it was a rule that in the third period, if we're ahead, you change your stick. And the trainer made sure that everybody had their stick legal when we were in the third period. Yep. There was the same thing with the King, except like Luke Robitaille had an illegal stick. He changed. Uh, I think uh, there was a couple guys that had the same thing. Marty didn't change the stick, and he was at the end of the game. We were losing. <laughs> I felt I feel bad. Like I met uh, I, I met Wayne and I met uh, Marty after, and yeah, they were upset. But like I told him, like why did you like all you had to do was change your stick? Nobody would have said anything. Yeah. We but even there, there, like, so that, that was the story. Like we, there was no cheating. It was just, uh, it was just a call. He was there. It was just unfortunate that he was still on the ice at the time of the game with the, an illegal stick. And you talked to him afterwards. Like, I mean, how, how pissed, <laughs> yeah, were, they? I, how yeah. pissed <laughs> were they? He was, he was pissed. <laughs> he was pissed. He, Barry pissed. Was, like, Barry was, he was cheap too. and he was like, you know, I understand him. I mean, you know, you, you lose the game and then that probably turned the series around because if we were to lose this game, it would have been, uh, we would have been 0 and 2. Uh, it would have been tough to come back, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, man. No, we've had Barry on. We've had Wayne on talking about it. It's, 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 <laughs> it's fun to go back and look at it. But you know what changed the series was, was you. You know, Wayne had, what, four points in that first game, dominated. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you got to shut his ass down. Like, what was your game plan going into 99? Mm. What would you do? Were you mean to him? Were you just hovering? Like, how would you do that? You mean in 83? 93? 93, yeah. yes. Uh, it, it was just, like, you know, I, I think Jacques, Jacques had a game plan of putting Kurt Muller and Vinny Dalfus against uh, Wayne. Um, you know, trying to go power against power, I think. Um like you, like you said, Wayne had a pretty good first game, and then I went to see Jacques after the next day, and I told him, listen, listen this is what I do. Um, I've done that from all my career, shut, trying to shut down the best player on the other side. I think you should try to put my line against him, and so that would keep uh, Kirk and Vinny free a little bit, and then put a little bit more offense on the board, and I think Jacques understood what I was trying to, to do. And um, so from that day, uh, most of the time when we were able, our line was against Wayne. And uh, it, it, was just, it was just a good hard work. Uh, three guys and five guys with the two defensemen. We, you know, uh, not that Vinny and Kirk couldn't play. But, you know, they were, they were on the ice more to score goals than defend. And... That way they can do what they what they were like for me to go on the series and not getting points. I didn't really care as long as the other guy that I shadowing didn't get anything. Uh, that's that, that's the pleasure I had. You know, Andy and I do radio every single day, and we hear different uh, perspectives on the game as a whole. And people complain about so many different things, Carbo. And <laughs> the the big topic is the refereeing and 
the difference between regular season and playoffs. And half the hockey fans, I think, are like, no, we love the old school. Put the whistles away so a team like Montreal could squeak in, shut you down because you can get away with a little bit more. What's your take, man, on, like, the difference between playoff hockey and regular season? Should it be the same? Do you like it the way it is? Well, I'm 61 years old. I have started playing in the NHL in 1982, and it's been like that since... I was born like every year we bitch about the referees. Yep. yep, yep. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's no it's no different. I mean, I think there is a, I, I, I don't like. I, I think there is a little different difference in between the regular season. Uh, I think it is true that the referee doesn't want to get involved too much. Uh, by doing that, they do. But like, if you look at the game really closely, which I I do, like I, I'm I'm like I said, like if you sit in the Bell Center. You hear so many people bitching about the refereeing that they don't call on the Montreal Canadiens. But if you really look both ways, it's the same thing. Like mm-hmm. Corey Perry is not an Corey Perry is not an angel. Uh, <laughs> Bay Weber's got more ropes than anybody that I know. Gallagher, I mean, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it comes it comes with respect. I, I think you know if, if they were call if they would call the book, we would play three on three for forty five minutes out of the game. I know, man. No. So I think so. I think they they you know I, I like the other day. Sherat uh, uh, hit Nosek cross check in the back of the head. Um, they didn't they didn't call it, which kind of you know it, it's it was okay. But then two minutes later, uh, Weber uh, somebody does the same thing to Weber and they Nosek. don't call it Nosek. <laughs> No seg exactly. Uh, no seg does the same thing, and now it's like, oh my god, what's going on? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's unbelievable. Like, same thing with you know the punch of McNabb on, on Suzuki. Yeah. Uh, a second before Suzuki cross checked him in the face, he just didn't hit him, but he was the the gesture was there. He just didn't hit him. Then McNabb hit him with a little punch, and then everybody's saying like, my god, like it's like so like you know if you look both sides. It's the same thing. I mean, I, I got frustrated too when I was playing um, because you want to pull for your team, but you know it, it's a really hard job. The game is so fast. The guys, those guys, are so big, and you know whether we want it or not, that's what playoffs is all about. Hey, what was it like when you were captain, though? And you know, like, well, it, it, oh. again, again, like it, it, for me, for me, it was I was I, I was French, so. Both the, the two languages were not a problem for me. Um, you know, there were some times where it, you're the face of the team, so you have to kind of take some of the responsibility. But I never, I never saw that as a hurdle or you know really hard. I mean, whatever sports you play, especially in today, you have to be able to forget. Like if, if you know you 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 do something, you forget it because if you don't. You're gonna go crazy, and you know I I I don't I'm you no know, I've watched social media because my two daughters are on it, but I'm not on it. I don't understand athletes that are are on social media. Mm. Well, uh, it, 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 I mean it, it's the worst place for for them to be. You're right. It, Twitter is. Twitter is yeah, whatever. It's whatever. It's di- it's different though. Like yeah. you still have to yeah. like for me. I regret. And I couldn't do it because of Lou Lamarillo. And I probably would have said something stupid on Twitter. Don't get me wrong. But if you build your you build your profile up so much where you have all these fans, you can monetize that afterwards. Now, most people make enough money where they don't have to worry about it. But if you don't, I look exactly. at it like, we, you, that's what Andy and I do now. It's our social media it helps us pay the bills. I, I know, you know, but like, like I, as a ho- what, which hockey player doesn't make money anymore? Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, th- I, think, no, I, mean, I think what I, you're and, saying, and, Guy, what? Guy, what you're saying, and tell me if I'm wrong, you're saying that because, listen, there's nothing that really good comes from it. Like, if you're having success, no. you, 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 no. you get too it, pumped up, and if you're yeah. struggling, yes. then all of a sudden, like, you become like a mental crazy man because you're just getting hounded, and you're getting, and, and all of a sudden, that impacts your ability to focus and, and, and perform, correct? And, and for, and for this. Six months or eight, a year or a year and a half of good things that comes out of it. Yeah, you say one bad thing. Oh yeah, and, and you're and then you're done. you're done, man. You're done. So you're absolutely, you're, done. you're done because it's it's written there. So like 
that's the part that I don't get. Like, you know, I, it, it's funny to hear Robin Leonard the other day say, you know what, I, I sat in a room two hours before the game and, and watched the social media uh, of everybody bitching after me, blah, 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 and that gives me, uh, you know, uh, but like, I, I just don't, I just don't get it. Like, build your brand. Like, what, what, like, like, what's Austin Matthews going to come out of it more than the hell of 11 millions or whatever, 12 million is making now? What, like, he might make a couple hundred grand if, if, if he builds whatever brand he wants. Right. I, I, or, I, I agree. Or, Completely or agree. Shinnick Bosby or uh, Alex Koveshkin. I mean, those guys have, you know, And then one thing happens, and then you. So I, I, for me, that's the hardest. That's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. 